But critics are concerned it could be seen as scientists playing God. We're joined by Professor Robert Winston, Lord Winston, who calls this an extraordinarily bad idea. Before we get to that, let's talk about another extraordinary bad idea. <laughs> what, what do you try and make some sense of what is happening with Brexit in this country? Because it seems to be well, nobody can. You sit in right. the House of Lords. No, no, nobody can make sense of that. Uh, I mean, it seems to me that. You know, it's chaotic because we have two parties who aren't clear about what they want. Mm -hmm. And so there's leadership problems right across the board in politics at the moment. But perhaps we ought to come back to embryos, I don't know. Yeah, I just, well, just finally, how do you think it's going to roll out? Well, I mean, you know, the way... People just don't know what's going on. It, no, the way it's going on, you could even end up with a second referendum after all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's that bad. Do you think that would be a good idea? No, I don't. But I think, mm -hmm. I think it may happen. Um, I think really... I mean, when the Prime Minister says, look, back me or else you're mm. going to get a different government, I mean, the implication is pretty obvious. Mm. You know. it, it, there is a sort of um, parallel, isn't it? You're, you're sort of tinkering with something in embryonic form and you're not quite sure well, how the, it's going to work the, out the, when it's fully formed. What really amazes me about the Nuffield Council of Bioethics is that they have completely forgotten that none of these... Uh, procedures are absolutely guaranteed. They're not predictable. Mm. So if you alter the DNA, you don't know actually what's going to happen afterwards and it'll be irreversible yes. and for the rest of generations. Be careful generations. what you wish for. Absolutely. And, I mean, I find that really surprising at a time when we need public trust in public bodies mm. for the Council of Bioethics, which is a respected body, to come out with this kind of statement without really thinking it through in terms of the biological facts what's is a big their, problem. What's their thought process, that, that you were trying to eliminate disease in adults but, or in children even? But we don't need that because we have a technique already called pre-implantation diagnosis, which has been used now for 28 years, mm. which is a very confirmed safe technique. So you mm. don't... You, and you can't eliminate these diseases anyway because new mutations occur all the time where the parents don't have them, so you can't screen for them in advance. So the whole thing is, I'm afraid, a nonsense. Mm. And it's very worrying when senior experts make those sorts of mm. predictions. Um, just going, you know, I, I, we can't have you here and not ask you, for instance, about the effect on the NHS of a no deal or a bad Brexit deal. You know, all the medicines that we need to bring through yes. a customs union. Do you well, worry that if yes, you come out we, of the customs we, union, not only people literally end up losing their lives yes. because we can't get And it's more than just medicine. Drugs. It's things like radioisotopes. It's also equipment for delivering mm. radiation therapy, for example, cancer treatment, because, of course, most of these things are made in Europe yeah. and we've had special deals. And, of course, there are going to be difficulties about transporting radioactive materials for healthcare across borders, which were never a problem mm. before. And that's something we've we fought very hard for in the House of Lords. I mean, the year atom issue was something that we, we argued about vigorously, and the government did give way, but it took ages for them to see the, the, the common sense in that. In terms of, of genetics, all this stuff that obviously is beyond my sort of brain power, but do you not think that in, you know, 100 years, we'll have made such advances that this kind of debate will have been completely overtaken by technology, that life will be very different, and this kind of thing may then be... A, a standard thing in life. Yes, I've no doubt that it's going to be a lot less than 100 years before somebody tries to modify a human embryo and make uh, an enhanced mm. human being. But that's no reason why we should be endorsing it mm. on an ethical basis, because it's not ethical. Uh, apart from the religious reasons that some people have, but that's a different issue about the notion of dignity of human life, you're bound to cause damage to an unborn child who can't give consent for the procedure. Mm. So you're and that will never change. And that will never change. Mm. So really, there needs to be extreme caution with these sorts of techniques. And I'm really surprised that scientists are starting to waver mm. in that view because it isn't wise. We need more than ever to have proper trust in technology because, of course, technology is dominating our society. We just seem to be losing trust in so many... if we start making so statements, that's so a big many problem. Things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, do, you, do, you feel, do you feel that a lot of people in your profession, are they, do they share your concerns, do you think? I imagine they do. Mm. Um, I th I'm sure that they do. Uh, of course we want to advance science, but you don't advance science by challenging normative values of the public. Mm. Lord Winston, as always, you bring a ray of common sense, okay. intelligence and calm to proceedings when all around it appears chaotic, inexplicable and beyond any of our understanding. It feels like we're on shaky foundations. At the moment. Yeah, it does. Um, good to talk to you, though. Need leadership. Need people like, maybe you should just take over. Mm -hmm. You're going to be <laughs> Prime Minister or something. God, no. Huh? <laughs> yeah, God, no. Terrible job. <laughs> <laughs>